Today's Daf Yomi is the Babas or Tzadi Gimel Babas or 93. The Daf is dedicated for Shmir, for the Chayalim, Atzal, for the Shviyim, Yeshua, for Am Yisrael, and it's Ace Tzara. The Gemara tells us on 93A, around 10 lines from the bottom, the Gemara tells us, Maybe it's a Machokas Tanayim. What's a Machokas Tanayim? Maybe this dispute between Rav and Shmuel. What is the dispute that we're discussing between Rav and Shmuel? The concept is, do we follow, and when it comes to a monetary matter, and there's an umdina, do we follow the majority? What's an umdina? An umdina is where we make evaluations on the, what we think was the likelihood that the seller had in mind. And then, and if he sells him something which doesn't hit that likelihood, then is it considered a mechachtos, a canceled sale? So Rav says it would be a canceled sale. And Shmuel says, Ain omdin b'memona, ain omdin basaro. We don't follow the majority. We don't care about the majority when it comes to money, only when it comes to matters that are permitted and prohibited. So Rav says we do follow the majority because we're making umdina, and Shmuel says we don't. So the Gemara says, well, maybe this is actually an earlier dispute, and Rav and Shmuel are engaged in an earlier dispute. Now, that would be problematic because... It's not ideal to say it's the Mahokas Tanoim, because why do they have to the same argument that the Tanoim had? Well, let's see what they say. So the Gemara says, Lema Ketanoi, Shor Shayaroa. Let's say you have an ox that was grazing. When it's a Shor Harug Batsido. And there's another ox that is found dead next to the ox that's grazing. This ox that was grazing was no fervent, and it had a history of being a goring ox. So even though the ox that's found dead was gored to death and the ox that's sitting there grazing has already gored in the past or that one ox was bitten and the other one has already bit oxen in the past. We don't say we don't say that the assumption is that it's that we could assume that the ox that was standing there is the one that did the biting or the goring. We don't say that. We 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 can't assume that. And that is like the position of Shmuel that when it comes to monetary matter, we don't follow the majority. Whereas Rabbi Acha says, Let's say you have a camel which is this camel is is basically hold on one second okay let's see a camel that was mating amongst the other camels benimsa gamal when a camel mates amongst the other camels, the, the males get violent and wild. And then you find another animal, another camel dead. You can assume that the animal that's dead was because it was killed by the camel that was mating. So that's like the position of Rav, that we follow the assumption. So Vrua, now the Gemara is going to lay out the assumption of the argument, which will also, of course, uh, be the the distinction that, that rejects this argument. So the Gemara says, Savrua de Ruba the Chazaka Kiadadinenu. In this case, we're talking about where the, the previous dispute between Rav and Shmuel was a case of majority. What was the majority? Do we assume that, that Rav and Shmuel are arguing about a case where you bought an ox intending to use it for plowing and it turned out to be a goring ox? So that was a case of the majority of oxen are bought in are bought for plowing, and this one ended up for meat. So that that was a case of majority. And this case here is the chazaka. The assumption is that this animal is a goring animal or a, or a violent mating camel. So the the gemara's assumption is at first that the ruba the chazaka that they're basically the same concept, the same principle. And therefore, Rav, who says we follow the majority. Rav the Amr Kirbi Acho, he must hold like Kirbi Acho says we follow the Chazaka. The Chazaka, the presumptive status of a mating camel is that it's violent. And Shmuel, 
the Shmuel says we don't follow the majority. He must follow the position of the Tanakama here. Who says we don't follow Chazaka. I'm a Rav Damak Rabbi Yaakov. The Shmuel Damak and Tanakama. So the Gemara says no. I'm a Rav. I know that I'm a Rav. Tanakama. I can even follow Tanakama here, who says that we don't give the Chazaka that this goring ox is the one that gored the dead animal. Why? Why does the Tanakama say in this case we don't assume that the animal gored that, that was gored to death is from the goring ox that's standing right next to it? Because we don't follow the presumptive status of a basaruba azlina. We don't follow the presumptive status, but we do follow the majority. Why? It's because he would say majority is stronger than the chazaka. The concept of a majority, majority of the animals in the world is stronger than the concept of a chazaka. And so therefore, we don't follow chazaka, but we do follow a majority. And therefore, you're exempt. But Shmuel would say to you, on the army, I feel a Rabbi Acha. Shmuel would say to you, I could say, even like Rabbi Acha. Shmuel, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Okay. Hold on one second. Shmuel would say, I could say, even like Rabbi Acha. Meaning, say, why is Rabbi Acha? We're on the bottom of 93A. Shmuel would say, I could even follow Rabbi Acha. Rabbi Yahu says that we assume that the camel that killed the other camels was the violent camel, or a camel killed the other camel was a violent camel. Because Ad Kanum Kama Rabbi Acha Hasam, why does Rabbi Acha say his position there? Does Lin and Bazar Chazaka that we follow the presumptive status? Because this animal, this camel is Muchsak. It's it's a presumptive status that since he's next to it, we follow the assumption. But the Ruba says the Rashbam is Lisa Kaman. There are two different statuses. In one case, the camel is standing right there, but the majority is not right in front of us. So therefore, we're not going to follow it. So the Gemara still has not established this dispute between Rav and Shmuel as based upon the uh, uh, earlier dispute. But now the Gemara is going to cite our Mishnah. So again, we're four lines from the bottom on 93a. The Gemara has said, uh, the, the Rav and Shmuel were arguing about a case where you buy an ox and it turns out that you can only use this ox for meat. You have to kill it. Rav says it's a mecha toast because the assumption is that you bought the ox for plowing because that's what most oxen are for. And Shmuel says we don't follow the majority when it comes to money and it's not a mecha toast and some oxen are indeed used for their meat. So the, the Gemara is saying, well, maybe this is our Mishnah supports the position of, Shm of Shmuel. Because Tashma, Mokar Peros Lechavero, let's say you sell the fruits to your friend, Vizaran Velo and it, and they don't, they don't grow. Vafil Zara Pishtin, even if it's, even if you planted, uh, even if you bought flax seeds and they don't grow, you're not responsible because since some people eat these seeds, therefore we can't assume that since most seeds are used for, Growing, you're responsible. So since some eat them, you're not responsible. That's exactly like Shmuel. So we see that this is support for Shmuel. And the Gemara says, Maya feel. Why does it say even if you bought the flax seeds? Rav Afilu Zara Pishtin, even if you bought the flax seeds, the Rubo is real, where most of them are used for planting. The Rubo is real Zabni. Afilu Achi was Lina Basar Rubo. We're not going to follow the majority. And that's exactly like Shmuel. So this is a, the, our Mishnah is not like Rav. And Mar says, you know what? You're right. Our Mishnah is not like Rav. Tinahi. But Rav is going to have a different source for Rav is going to have a different source. What's the source for Rav? Rav has a Brisa. The Tanya, Rav has a Brisa. Sometimes the Gemara does say Rav Tana Hupolik. And Rav is his own Tana. But and 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 here it doesn't say that. And also, usually the Mishnah is better than a Brisa, but since Rav is really uh can also be a Tana, therefore Rav can just rely on a Brisa because it's almost the equivalent of uh Rav is almost the equivalent of a Tana. So Gemara says it's a it, there's a price that supports Rav. A mochar peros lechavero v'zar and vod zamchu zaron egina she'inechon chayvach rius. And let's say you sell the fruits and you plant them and they don't grow or you have the if so you, you sell the fruits to your friend you plant them and they don't grow if they be garden seeds which are only used for planting 
then Chayvach Yusin, then the seller has to pay for it. Zera Pishtin, but if it's flax seeds, ain't no Chayvach Yusin. You're not responsible to pay for it because some people use those for eating. And so this is like Shmuel, but Rabbi Yossi Omer, Rabbi Yossi is of the position or at the top of 93b, no single to me Zera. Rabbi Yossi says, no, that if it's the flax seeds, you have to pay him because it's a mekach tos, because the assumption is that some people use the flax seeds, even though some people use them for eating, most use them for growing. So that Rabbi Yossi seems to be like the position of Rav, that we do, they can um, do not follow the majority. So Amrullo, but then they said to him, who's them? The people of the yeshiva, they turned up to Rabbi Yossi and they said, what are you talking about? Harbe lokhenoso. Yes, even though, even though the majority of seeds sold in the world are used for gardening, but that's because one person buys a lot of seeds for gardening. But the majority of the people who buy seeds are buying them for eating because you buy one, you buy less seeds for eating than for growing. So more people buy the seeds for eating, but more seeds are sold for growing. So you don't have a row here. You don't have a majority because we follow the majority of the people, not the majority of the seeds. So the Gemara says, okay, so who is this Machokas Tanayim? Man Tanay, you say that Rab is like that there's that remember Shmuel says we don't follow the majority and Rab says we follow the majority. Where is this a dispute between Tanayim? You aim at Rabbi Yosi If you want to say that the dispute between Rav and Shmuel is the, the dispute between Rabbi Yosi and the and this position that we're calling the Amruo position, no, because both of them accept the concept that we follow the majority. Travail Basar Rubas, they both follow the concept of the majority. It's just Mar Azil Basar Ruba the Inchi. The Amruo follow the majority of people. Mar Azil Basar Ruba the Zriya. And the and the Rabbi Yossi follows the majority of the planting. So who is the Machokas Tanaim? So the says, yeah, it's Itanakama of Rabbi Yossi, Itanakama of Amrullah. So the Tanakama says, we don't follow the majority, and either Rabbi Yossi or the Amrullah, they argue with him, because they both say we follow the majority. It's just a question of which majority, the majority of the seeds, the majority of people, and Rav holds like one of uh, one of them. He either holds like Rabbi Yossi or the Tanakama. So now the Gemara raises... Uh, Another question. Tan Rabbanon, when you say he has to pay him, if he sold them Zaroni Gina, if he sold them garden seeds, not for eating, and they don't grow, he's got to pay him back the money. He's, it's, a, it's a mistaken sale. But Mao who knows single, what is he giving him? What is he paying him? Demei Zera, does he just have to pay him for the money he spent? The low hutzah, but he also didn't just spend money. You, you, you hired out your ox for a day, you got a plow, you took a whole day of work. You bought the suntan lotion to so you don't get sunburned while you're plowing the field. You have to get. Do you just pay for the seeds and not the expenses? The yeshomrim afots. Others say you also pay for the expenses. So who is the yeshomrim? Rabbi Shimon Amar Rav Chista Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. He if this is Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. Well, Tosus points out in Tab Tosus Afagav the time on the yeshomrim Hainu the Rabbi Nason. In the end of the Gemara Masechas Horius, we say. The Yesh Omer is Rabbi Nasin. Here we have a Kabbalah that the Yesh Omer is Rabbi Shum Ben Gamliel. So, and in other places we have Yesh Omer is Rabbi Acha. And so, okay, so normally it's Rabbi Nasin, but here it's Rabbi Shum Ben Gamliel, sometimes Rabbi Acha. Okay, fine. So back to the Gemara. So Rabbi Shum Ben Gamliel is the one who says that you also have to pay for the expenses. So the Gemara says, well, where does Rabbi Shimon Gamliel say that? Hi, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. He lay me Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. Demas Nisan. If you want to say it's Rabbi Shimon Gamliel of our Mishnah, our Mishnah, that Rabbi Shimon Gamliel says you pay also for the expenses. The Tanan. Amochar peros lechavero, let's say you sell your fruits to a friend. It says in our Mishnah. Vizaron v'lot samcho, and then they don't grow. Afilu zara pishtyan. Even if they were flax seeds, I feel as our pishtan you're not responsible. I mean to say, even if they were flax seeds, which are mostly used for gardening, we still don't have to pay. This is the position of Shmuel, the seller doesn't have to pay. 
But what's the next cause say? Ema say for the next cause says Rabbi Shpagomer Zerone Gina Sheina Nechohen Chayav Bach Riusen. The next cause says. The next cause says that if it would be a garden seed, then you would be responsible to pay. So the flax seeds you don't have to pay. Garden seeds you do have to pay. So, but why is this Rashbag's position? Tanakama nami hachikamar. But that why is Rashbag any different than the Tanakama? Isn't that what the Tanakama is saying? Zara pishon hudeinu chayav The the implication Tanakama's position is the flax seeds you don't have to pay. Hazarone gin but the garden seeds, which are never eaten, those you would have to pay. Excuse me. So if that's the case, what in fact is the dispute between Rashbag and the Tanakama? So maybe the dispute is Elav Hotza Ika Maybe the distinction between them are the expenses that the Tanakama would be of the position. Marasavar to May Zera. Tanakama is a position you just pay for the seeds in the case of the gardening. Umarasavar Afotzai. And for Rabbi Shmuel Amil saying you also pay for the expenses. And so the Gemara says, the Gemara says no. How, do, how can you prove from the Mishnah that that's the dispute? That Tanakama says you don't pay for expenses and Rashbak says you do. Dilma Ipcha. Maybe it's the opposite. Rashbak says you don't pay for expenses. Tanakama says you do. Versus no, Holo Kasha. No, that we wouldn't say. That's not a question. Why? Because Kol Tana Basra with Fuye Milsa Kaasi. The way it works in the editing of the Mishnayos is whatever Tana is added on, the later the Tana in the, in the source, the more he's adding on. So the Rav Shemuel is adding on the idea that you also pay the expenses. Gemara says, we don't necessarily have to say that this is the Rashbag who, who says that you also pay for expenses because Dilma Kula Rashbagi, maybe the whole Mishnah is actually the position of, of Rashbag. And then there's not a Machokis at all in our Mishnah. It's all Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. Maybe the Mishnah is just uh, missing some words at which we need to edit in. This is how you would read our Mishnah. Let's say you sell your fruits to your friend. And then and then you sell your fruits to your friend and they don't, and you plant them and they don't grow. A few zara pishtan, even if it's flax, it's eno chayim vachriyusan. You're not responsible. Divri rashpag. And this is the position of rashpag. She rashpag omer zaroni gino she in the chon chayim vachriyusan. Because rashpag says the garden seeds you have to pay, but not the other seeds. And so therefore the whole Mishnah is rashpag. And so therefore you can assume that rashpag is saying, they have to pay expenses. So this can't be the source for the idea that you have to pay the expenses. So it must be the following is the position of Rashbag. So this is the Brisa, which you already had in Baba Kama 99b. We had this uh, back in the end of Baba Kama. What does it say there? It says, let's say you bring you bring your wheat to the person who's got the millstone to grind up your wheat into flour. You're supposed to soak the, the berries first. He didn't do it. He didn't get rid of the he didn't get rid of the bran around the wheat. And he wasn't trying to make bran flakes. He was trying to make wheat without without the bran on it. Or Mortzan. Or it didn't went out uh Go out with the brand, it went out with the more sun. Uh, and and so therefore more sun is basically a type of brand also, but it's not as thick as the full brand. It's so it's just still not the same type of flour that you wanted. Or you bring the kemach to the baker or an autom of the afo pas the poem. He brought out bread that was no good. It was Crumbly, he didn't make a good bread. Or behemo at the bach, he brought the animal to the butcher. Vinibwa, the butcher messed up. Chayv and meshu can no say schar. He's like a, uh, he's going to be responsible to pay because since he is getting paid himself, uh, he's, um, because since he's getting paid, therefore he's like a shomer sachar. And so therefore he's going to be responsible for the damages. Uh, since he's getting paid for his work, he's going to be responsible.
That's uh, and the Gemara Baba Kama says that's why you gave him the money so that he wanted to be more careful. And so therefore, he's only going to be exempt if it was an uh, it was an unforeseeable accident, an ones. And this is not an ones because if he'd been more careful, it wouldn't have happened. But if he had done it for, for free, uh, then he'd be exempt. So okay, so the Gemara, but Rav Shimon Gamliel says. Mishnah Omar no single to me boshto. Mishnah says that you have to pay for him the embarrassment who to me boshes orchav and the embarrassment of his guests, meaning to say that he invited a lot of guests and he, now he has nothing to feed them, and so and so therefore Mishnah Gamliel adds on basically an accessory expense, and this is like the additional expenses that you laid out. The law is not like Rav Shimon Gamliel. But the law is like the Rabbanon who say that you're exempt from Boshes. So anyway, we see from here that that's where Rabbi Gamliel says you also pay for the expenses. Now Rabbi Gamliel says, this was actually a great custom in Jerusalem that no saying low to make Boshes or to make Boshes or Achav. And you would have to pay not only for the damage you he thought he was buying bread, but you also pay for the humiliation he caused to his uh the humiliation he got from not serving his guests properly. Rabbeinu Gershom explains that the reason for excuse me, the Ridva explains that the reason for the Takana was so that the 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 millers and the bakers would be very careful not to cause the, the their customers you know, the money, and so therefore they make him pay for the expenses and the humiliation of the guests. Now, Rav Shimon Gamliel says, Mina Godol Ayyav Yerushalayim, Amoser Sudol Chavero, the Kilkula, that indeed this was the custom in Jerusalem, that if you gave a, you hired a caterer, they messed it up, no so it's made Boshto Boshes Orchav. You have to pay for the humiliation expenses of his guests as well. Oh, Minah Gadol Ayyavishlaim. Another great custom in Jerusalem. Since we're talking about this phrase, the Minah Gadol, therefore we have another source which talks about a Minah Gadol in Jerusalem, which and they said here. Mape Prusal Gabe Pesach. They used to spread a tablecloth over an entrance into a house. Kozman Shemape Prusa. Well, whenever the tablecloth was spread out, Orchen Nechnasin, the guests would be able to come in. Nistalka Mape, then once the tablecloth was removed, and the guests no longer came in. The, since the door was open, the commentaries explained they hung up the tablecloth to have some privacy. But this was a way. Why is this called a mina gadol? Why is this called uh, uh, a great custom? Because it was able to remove the humiliation from the guests because they knew where they could go and they weren't embarrassed. And the marshal says it's because it was the great mitzvah of Achnasas Orchem. Was this just a mitzvah in Jerusalem or was it a mitzvah everywhere? So this uh, um, this mitzvah, this custom, seems like it was a custom only specifically in Jerusalem to act in this way. Because it says, Okay, so now we go on to the next Mishnah.